Welcome back, guys. Um, I know I haven't uploaded in a couple of months, but apparently Apple computers like to break themselves if you look at them wrong, I guess. So I did lose a good amount of content. But anyway, moving forward. So to get you guys caught up, especially those that just joined me in the last couple episodes, by the way, I was not expecting that. Once again, you guys really surprised me with the turnout. Um, I opened these videos because I like to, I guess, keep a record in my car, show you guys a little bit of what I'm doing. Um, but you guys really skyrocketed into the millions of views. And I'm almost at 100,000 subscribers. I remember when 10,000 was my goal. You guys are amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So some of you guys know the deal, but seeing as how many new subscribers I have, um, let me get you guys caught up. So basically the build is a 1994 Honda Accord that I really want to focus completely on the engine and ignore the outside sometimes even making it ugly on purpose and to achieve that while staying at a somewhat budget build if you could even call it that anymore um, i do use the f22b1s that come in these cars um, one of the main reasons is because they have an iron sleeve from the factory so they're pretty much sleeve from the factory but the main main reason is that they're 165 dollars at my local junkyard versus a dual overhead cam motor which would be around 800 dollars and would still need the sleeves because they're not iron sleeved so don't get me wrong build for build dual cam would make a lot more power but the F22 is just cheap power, straight up cheap power. If you've been following the channel for a while, you know the main build is with forged rods, pistons, and a reinforced block. Um, but in these last couple episodes, I did swap in a stock F22B1 with my turbocharging system attached to it. With that being said, on this episode, I will be pulling out the stock motor and I will be preparing the built motor to go back in there along with a few other mods. Lastly, I will add that I did want to make this all one giant episode where I swap it in and even get it tuned. But unfortunately, it's already being a really long video so I will upload the next part not too long after this one so stay tuned so here you would have to listen closely but he actually does honk it off Cool dude. So we ended up next to this 392 and we lined up next to him because he kept looking over. He dropped the gear, uh, so did I. And after a couple seconds, I just went for it and it looks like he tried to reel me in. Oh, he dropped it. So unfortunately, the only next run I could. Sorry, this shit's a little. So unfortunately, that was the only good run I had. I did get this one where you can see him in the mirror. I think he tries to do a flyby, so I signal him that I'm going as well, and I'd leave him behind just for a little bit. Um, after this, we did go our separate ways, and unfortunately, I wasn't recording the Tesla. This next one's a quick little run with the golf. Um, he did notice us and knew what we were trying to do, so he was pretty cool about it, and he went for it.
right, YouTube. While I wait for my cam to come back in, what I'm gonna do for right now is weight reduction. So since this is an electric window, it does have a motor which is pretty heavy. So I wanna see if I can take that out and possibly cut out a little bit. And I don't wanna rip out anything that has to do with safety or anything. Okay, so besides those two screws, I just, I mean, I guess pried it. Okay, so apparently you're supposed to take this part off first. All right, so pretty much just disconnected this plug. Now this came out. I'm guessing I could wiggle this. There you go. This is this. I'm guessing once I take this off, the noise inside is going to get pretty bad. Um, but race car life. I already don't have a radio, although I could install it, but I don't want to. Also, these speakers aren't really in there. This is just empty covers. Okay, I know all this already looks overwhelming, at least to me it does, but super simple. All this motor, all this junk, I don't need it. If I ever do regret this or if this goes wrong, um, I can just go to the junkyard and get a new door for like 50 bucks and then boom, boom, four bolts and I have a new door. So I outlined where I'm gonna cut out to begin with. See, now this is heavy. This is chunky. I would like to just point out, this is 27 years old and it's still working. That's awesome. So this is pretty much just a wheel spinning a cable. This brings the cable all the way back in, window comes up. My biggest fear was that this thing would drop like a guillotine and shatter, but it actually has a lot of like friction. Honestly, all I have to do is strap this down and the window stays up. So, I was not, so let me see. Window up. I just realized this doesn't have a speaker. So that's already weight reduction on its own. No way that just worked. There is no way that just worked. I was so ready to start welding things. So I did go back to add a little piece of plastic where the wire was going to be rubbing against sharp metal. Um, you know, just to be safe for the future. So I was originally going to weigh how much I'm taking out, but I'd rather just weigh the car afterward. This is pretty heavy right here. We'll just check the difference later on, right? As far as trunk weight reduction, I'm going to take out the center panel. This part, to leave some strength to it, ease into it, kind of like... I have a feeling it's not going to work anyway. It's going to be wobbly. It's not going to want to latch, something like that. So it's loose. Only problem is there is spot weld such as this one. There you go. So it's still attached somewhere. I just don't know where. I'm about to cut myself. I'm thinking there's adhesive behind here. There you go. I'm very, very sure the trunk is flimsy now. Now, will it close and open or did I just ruin my trunk? Let's find out. It moves a little bit. If I pull hard enough, it'll move. There you go. So latching still works. So after the weight reduction, I didn't really do anything too crazy to it. I do daily it. Um, you know, I give it its maintenance as it was needed. Um, I even made a TikTok explaining to you guys why the car's so quiet. Um, I ended up going on Facebook Live when I pulled the turbo. 
And you guys dared me to turn it on without the turbo on there. So we did it. Damn, y'all said bet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. And of course, as you guys already know, I like to meet up and talk with you guys at car meet. So I have been going to a good amount of them. And yeah, besides that, my car's still my daily. Okay, so the first thing I'm noticing here is that where this carbon area is, is where the gasket probably doesn't cover it. That pretty much tells me that's got to go. Um, so let me, let me put the gasket on it really quick. Oh yeah, I'm Honda, that's the part number. So I'm gonna make sure I cut it to this location and not this location. And I'm also gonna be doing the intake side and I do have the intake here. Again, OEM Honda. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So as far as intake, it's actually pretty well matched from the factory. Hey, hey, hey let's work for me. Okay, cool. There's a little bit of a lip on this side. Check it out. Okay, so this piece right here, this little lip. Also, I want to check how this does on the intake manifold. All right, moment of truth. How much work are we putting into this? A lot, I guess. Um, of course, I had to put the intake on to see how it looks. Couldn't wait. I did trace this line to make sure I put the gasket and the intake at the same spot. It didn't work in the end. So most of them had a small lip on the bottom and an imperfection on the right side. Probably from casting. Some had it smaller, but it's there, so I marked it. So I've done this before, but it's been a while, so I decided to get a practice piece of aluminum and see how it works. That is sketchy as shit. I don't know about that. Nah, this bitch definitely flew apart. Oh, nice, it snapped. <laughs> Alright, take two. So that was my fault because I didn't screw in the sanding drum all the way down so the top had room to flop, in which case it ended up flying off. The sandpaper rolls were definitely not cutting fast enough. Okay, so I'm gonna try this one. Since it is a fine burbit, it didn't cut as much as I needed, so I did end up switching, as you're gonna see, to a much bigger cutting bit. All right, looks like I'm actually gonna have to clean this so I can see what I'm doing. All right, there you go. Doesn't have to be perfect as long as I can see my sharpie marks, I guess. So, it's getting clogged up. I knew this would happen because this isn't for aluminum. So this is the old fitment with the lip. This is the new fitment. So trying to get the aluminum out from between the teeth was starting to take too long. And that last piece I can't even get out. So I'm gonna have to use this bit for aluminum. Said my only concern is it's really aggressive. It eats real fast. Like I said, this bit is really aggressive. So I did my best to barely touch, you know, lightly touch the walls to take off a little bit of material at a time. Even then it's difficult to control, but I did it. The parts where I really flowed through it, almost like a CNC cut.
So this far left port is already done by the time I filmed this because I did make a TikTok. So if you want to go check that out, it's the same username. But yeah, it was pretty straightforward from here. Originally, I was gonna use compressed air to just get it cleaned up, but I realized that there was a lot of big chunks in between the crevices, and it's already out, so might as well just use a quick tool to take it apart really quick and clean it out. There you go. And this is exactly why I wanted to remove them. Look at those metal shavings I got in there. So pretty much same steps. Once you get the hang of the tool, it takes about 45 seconds each. Just pop them all out. But this is the stuff I'm trying to get out. Look at that, all the metal shavings in the valves. There's a little bit of surface rust on the springs. And I just want to refresh those before I get it in. Um, another, another thing to point out, you can see the regular valves, the regular running valves, and then the VTEC valves. The, the ones that are used less often are obviously less worn out. Yo, what's up with these ghetto dogs? So I scrubbed them. And I guess I'm gonna dry them off. Okay, so fast forward a day, it got kind of late. So the surface rust is clean. They're a little bit dusty off of the napkins I've been using. Got done with the port matching job. Very happy with it. Springs are back in. Um, that's there because of a TikTok live I did yesterday. But uh, anyway, I brought the motor up top. Okay, so on this motor, this stud is actually longer than the rest, so I just put an L there. So I don't confuse it with this one for by any chance. Yeah, but yeah, now I'm just gonna pull them out and clean up the surface, get ready to put the head on. So this is the part number I use. It's for an H23, but this one does have the extra long stud in the middle, which is what the F22B1 uses. Oh, shiny. shiny. There's the stuff. washers and the stud some grease on them and you can see the extra long one right in the middle sticker so i am replacing them on my higher horsepower engine um, the used ones, I'm going to save them so I can use them for a budget build or something because those are still good. They're still better than stock ones. They're plenty strong, but you know, um, while I'm in here, I want the new stuff. But like I said, all over the internet, people reuse them constantly with great success. Per the ARP instructions, they recommend you hand thread these in, hand tight. So I am going to add lubricant to the bottom of these before I screw them in. Reason being, since you want to eliminate any friction between here and the threads on the inside. Your torque wrench will end up clicking before these are actually tight inside the block. But yeah, let's get to it. So I'm going to get the long one out of the way first. Again, hand tight. Hey, yo, chill. Why is it screaming? <laughs> it's yelling at me.
There you go. Okay, so it's time to install these uh, copper spray. So it's time to install these washers and nuts. So they say to coat both sides of the washer, the inside and the bottom of the nut. Reason being, any part that has friction with each other is going to create resistance and that's going to give you a false reading on your torque wrench. So let's get to it. So I only coated the bottom of the washer because when I coat the bottom of the nut, it's going to be, you know, completely covered. All right, that might have been an excess of amount. Anyway, okay, there you go. Some on the bottom, some on the inside. Okay, hand tight for now. And I'm just going to repeat that all the way through. Okay, cool. There you go. Have them all hand tight. Excuse the rain in the background. Okay, so the torque sequence and the torque pattern is these first three steps that are OEM right here. Um, but then ARP recommends a final torque value of 90, 90 foot pounds. So I'm going to follow the OEM instructions. And then once I have the OEM torque spec, which is 73 pounds, uh, I'm going to go ahead and keep stepping it up to 90. So at this point, it's really about following the instructions and following the OEM torque patterns. Um, I know it's easy to assume that tight is tight, but honestly, after doing some research, it turns out that if you over tighten something, you could easily start warping the head and it'll make a worse seal than with the proper torque spec. So here I'm taking off the old RTV with a gasket scraper. Um, this thing works really great because it actually does pick up the gasket like it's a sharp blade, but it's not hard enough to actually scratch metal. This one's always different. So I got the water pump in, but before I put the rest of it on, I'm gonna jump over to the cam so that I can have the cam gear in and I can have all the timing set and done because it does require that I put a plastic engine cover before I put the flywheel, I mean the, the pulley. So yeah, cam first, plastic cover, then the final touch. So here's the camshaft. There you go. Delta camshaft. Reground camshaft. 272. There it is. Yeet. Gorgeous. A little bit of RTV on the corners per instruction manual. Nice and covered in oil. M shaft seal. Boop. motion assembly so this whole little assembly here always tripped me out how complicated it looks but as long as you keep it together and nothing flies apart you know apply pressure on both sides and just put it on how you took it off okay so I had the cam a little bit misaligned on the inside so I just pushed it and then everything dropped into place did I scratch something? I don't know. We're going to find that on the dyno and then I'm going to cry about it.
if I put the pulleys in, the first half of the timing cover has to go on first. Okay, so pretty much this is just like a regular engine cover, the OEM ones. Um, I think it looks much cleaner when you replace it, and I think this was, I think this was like ninety dollars at AutoZone. Okay, so this is obviously the bottom part, top, top and bottom. Uh, this is the part I was talking about. So this goes behind the cam gear. But considering it doesn't come with instructions, I got most of it figured out. For instance, this piece here slides over it. These free floating seals have to slide in between here, but I can't find a way for them to stay. Okay, so yeah, I guess they do stay if you put the wider side in. It's all stuck. Doesn't feel like it's popping out. I don't know why it stays, but it does. So that's cool. Cam gear. Don't forget your key. Why does it feel like that's not the right washer? This is the correct one. Something to know when installing the cam is that if one of the pistons is at top dead center and you install the cam wrong, you could accidentally push a valve down and as you're bolting it down, you'll be bending the valve. So I did make sure to keep all the pistons in the middle of the cylinder so none of them could be high enough to touch a valve. And after that, I made sure to have my timing marks correct. Pretty much just make sure you know where your pistons and valves are at all times. There you go, nice and easy 40. Motor mount. So I'm only going to put those three bolts because I remember when I was trying to take the head off, I could not get these off. Yeah, I'm going to future proof it by not adding these. I don't think it's too important. Um, I've seen people even run without these, so it makes me feel more comfortable just having three bolts. All right, cool. Now the only thing left is this cover, but I don't know. Something tells me to do it later. Nice and tight, and it still hasn't clicked. Jesus Christ. There you go. Nice and clean on the inside. Here we go. So from experience, I know to keep these uniform, um, especially not to tighten one more than another because you'll start warping the pan. Not in a bad way, but it'll be enough for the gasket to not seat properly. You know, it'll start arching 
Um, instead of just sitting flat, it'll start pulling one part of the pen more than the other, and you'll have a leak through there. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna tighten just these by hand. So up until this point, I've done everything that there is to do as far as off the car. So the only thing left to do is to pull the engine out. Let's do it. All right, YouTube. So I just went on the final drive with it. Um, one final check so that you guys know I didn't blow it because there's always rumors as to why I'm switching the engine. Um, still running healthy. Time to pull it. Filter comes out first. This thing is smooth. Can't even touch it without it going either way. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. Ow! Does it just peel out? No. Oh. I know. That's true. Companies for clamps. Clamp co. <laughs> That's what it's called. <laughs> oh, bro. Oh, brother. I'd like to point out this is a huge benefit of a top mount. I'm not under the car trying to mess with this. Love it. <laughs> is it worth the lag? I don't know. Well, it fell. It's coming out by itself. Cool. Move it for Adam. What? Well, oh, that looks like it's been broken because I didn't even try. Cool. YouTube. Beautiful manifold. Doesn't even need that much porting either. <laughs> Nothing fell in the background. What are you talking about, YouTube? I decided to jump over and pull the axles before it got any hotter. In my opinion, my welding has gotten better since I made this pipe, so I am going to remake it next episode. Stay tuned for that. Fine. Easy way.
And while I'm editing this, I'm realizing my new intake and fuel setup looks a lot better than this, so make sure you tune in. Okay, so the camera died last night and it was getting pretty late anyway. So I just took it out. You guys didn't really miss anything. It's an exact repeat of two episodes ago when I pulled out the built motor and put this one in. Literally same background, same everything. Just pulled it out. That's it. <laughs> 